So how many of you have apps which have a login page? Many of you people, right? So good. Uh, what we're going to talk about in the next half an hour is what are the identity products that we have and how you might want to use some of them together to kind of give a better experience for your user. Uh, login is not an easy problem to solve. Uh, you might look at it like oh, one screen with a user ID password and I'll tell you how much complexity is there over this next set of slides. But the idea is to call out some of the current issues with workflows uh, on identity, what options we are providing. I'm not talking about external uh, authentication APIs. I'm just going to talk about what Google's providing for you today and how this can kind of make an experience a little better. And if there are questions, I can take it towards the end. So let me start with something which you want to differentiate, identity and security. They're not the same. That's the whole point that you should start thinking about. Identity is not about validating who you are. It is just getting an identifier for a particular user. Your name is your identity. Your email ID could be your identity. But when coupled with the password, when you can verify against it, that's when security is actually coming in. A lot of times, solutions don't need security. They just need an identity. Like if you want to save a user's preference, which he's not editing, but only your app is actually going to understand, all you need is identity. You don't need a user ID password there. You just need an identity against which you could save certain parameters, which you can reuse to kind of make the experience better. Simple example is personalization. If you want to kind of use data to personalize somebody's experience, you need an identity at most times. When you want that person to be able to change it, that's when you need the security part of it. You can then actually kind of look at it like, OK, I need to allow him to sign in, verify his identity, a verified identity, then allow him to change his password or, or allow him to change his settings in this case, which, which the app might have collected on its own. So first thing is start off by deciding what your solution really needs. There are a lot of solutions where people usually ask for a user ID password, but the user does not have anything to edit against. It basically is for only storing their data or personalizing some information that they later use. Why would we need these identity solutions? Basically because apps are now more complicated. If you take five years ago to a build today, most of them have identity, most of them have like uh, personalization, which requires identity. Most of them have uh, your bank accounts, your social profiles, all of these things, card, pay, card pay, sorry, payment options, all these things are something that you need to protect with the security around it. So apps have become more complicated. Things that you're building have become more complicated. So the need for having security and uh, have using identity, identity solutions are more and more prevalent right now. Again, uh, securing data is not the only thing here. You also have a lot of apps which are actually building personalization and experience around it. So users always love that personalized experience. And that's like an identity that you're uh, things that people are actually seeing as plus points of your app. So you really need to kind of build these things. But when you look at the login screen, a lot of people look at like that when they want to log in. You really have to consider login, and then you have to look at what are the options provided, which one should I use, did I use this last time, all these sort of things, questions start coming into your mind. So, and login is not something that is like a part of your business. It's basically a way to get to your service. So you need to make this as frictionless as possible and make it as easy for the user so that he can get, get over this hurdle and then get into your app. Making it harder here is kind of a way for dropping users off. So typical thing, if you look at a login screen today, you have some of these questions that come to your mind. What are the permissions that I need to give here? It's asking for SMS, it's asking for this account, uh, storage, so multiple permissions are getting asked. Why, where are they going to use this information? Now, there will be multiple login options provided. Twitter, Facebook, GitHub, email ID, password. Which one should I use? Which is going to be more convenient for me? Which one should I share? These are all questions that the user has to answer before coming to this. And again, if it is something like user ID, password, you did not uh, think when you put your first name dot last name at gmail.com that you had to type that, that long names every single time you want to log in. So you would have loved to put the first names, first word, first cap, maybe a few characters, and the second name, few characters. But instead, you put like really long names as your Gmail IDs. Now typing it in without any mistakes become a problem. So these are all places where users actually slow themselves down. And when you already made your login, the next time you're trying to log in, again, you have problems. 
you then think about i don't really remember the password that's just part of the problem okay you can also have problems in which option of the four did i select last time if you remember the option which gmail id did i use and sad part of this whole concept is that you have to try each of them to figure out what you did or did not do you can't really think have any additional information there i think i used gmail so now try to log in with gmail and say so no account found okay then i did not use gmail so this becomes like a permutation combination problem to solve but this is not simple because according to research that uh, some of the ux team did uh 92% of users drop off when they can't figure this out they are not taking the time to kind of go and try all these options 9 out of 10 abandon an app when they're trying to log in that's so much of business lost and i'll keep calling business out because that's what you are in business of the apps right you're not always about free providing for the better of the world you're also kind of trying to make money out of this but if people are not able to relog in into your app how are they going to experience your service and earn i mean how will you earn revenue if people are not coming into it so the relog in a lot of you guys save it make it automatic for users to come in but one year later when they actually re- kind of change their phones they again have to go through this whole trouble now when you building login is not just about signing up there are multiple flows sign up password recovery resetting passwords sign in all these flows have to be built with the same level of security and same level of thought that you are doing for the login screen so there are alternative paths that you have to take what happens when each of these paths when the network connectivity is not there when network connectivity is there when the server returns an error all these conditions have to be taken care so this is not really super simple and the problem multiply when you have multiple platforms to support like web ios android so then each place you have to build all these flows so building a login system is not like oh like i'll do this over a weekend it becomes quite tricky as you go when it scales you need scalable backend to do that like suddenly some of the top app uh blogs feature you you get hundreds and thousands of users coming into your app on on that first 3 days you need the system to be able to scale to that too so these are all real problems that happens uh and you need to kind of work with it but what do what do really users want users uh what do you think users want why do you think uh login is kind of this my god i have to do this again sort of a thing what what do users look for when they when they think about a login screen any guesses they would like phone numbers instead of email ids okay that's one way a lot of indian uh indian apps have actually moved on to phone based authentication so all these are different solutions to the problem but the problem really is that all users want the simplicity why do you think everybody puts the same password for all the sites bad idea by the way <laughs> if you put the same password for all the sites one password one site leaks it your entire <laughs> so echo i'm going to say your entire net uh, a secure web browsing or uh, service usage becomes like open for everybody to play around with so don't do that i know i can see a lot of smiles which means some of you guys are doing that <laughs> when i say same password for multiple sites don't do that that's a bad idea uh but passwords are not the bad thing and people don't remember because passwords are bad or, or forget because passwords are bad it's just not simple enough so one of the other stats most of the passwords the top passwords people use one is password by the way the word password is a password is the password and other other common ones are 1 2 3 4 5 6 that's actually very high in the list of top 20 passwords used in the world but the very interesting thing is out of the top 20 passwords people use a majority of them are a combination of 1 2 3 4 5 6 6 is 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 5 6 1 2 3 4 5 6 like that or 6 4 backward majority of the top 20 passwords there is i am not asking you guys to go hack anybody tonight okay i'm just giving you some stats just to prove the point that it's just difficult for people that's where google sign in comes in that's the first product i want to talk about that's google sign in basically couple of things that we did google sign has been around for some time couple of things that happened in the last year is that an improved ui came into picture so if you've tried google sign in a couple of years ago then the experience that you have now versus what you had a couple of years ago would be different 
first thing that happened was that the first screen, which is the one in the blue, that, that UI was how it came. It said, I, the site wants to do this. It wants to do X, Y, Z things. It will get these, these sort of information. A lot of cognitive overload there because people had to understand what that meant. From that, we changed to the second screen, which is choose an account and the account, I mean, like your Gmail ID just comes up there. Really easy for users to work with. What we did internally is basically to kind of uh, reduce the amount of information that's coming back in your JWT, which is a uh, web token, JSON web token, and the user's pass email ID. And this was made consistent across platforms. That's the web one, and this is the iOS one. So it became consistent across platforms. Made it easier for people to see that if they've used or experienced your app on the web, it becomes very easy for them to kind of go through the same work workflow when they're using it on Android, or vice versa, or on another platform, by the way. The second thing was all the SDKs were reoriented to kind of give uh, the basic profile information, which consisted of four things. Your, what was the type, uh, your name, email ID, and your uh, web, your photo URL. So three pieces of information come back in an encrypted web token. So that made it consistent across it. And if you wanted more information, then you could use the People API. There's another API called People API, and a request for more information. When, at that point, the user will be prompted to provide access to that information, though. But making the simplification kind of does a couple of things. One, it reduces the number of calls to the server. It basically, earlier, you would actually ask for an access token. Then uh, you will sign in. You get an access token back. Using the access token, you will pass that access token to your backend server. The backend server would then go ask for user information and then would get the user information. So multiple round trips, multiple systems involved. With a new ID flow, what happens is your app will ask for the information basically ask for sign in, you get an ID token back. The ID token uh, is passed to your backend and you get the information ready. So you, it is easy for you to kind of work with it. The round trip, one more round trip to the server got reduced. Because the encrypted token, the encrypted token goes back to your backend. Your backend can unencrypt it and then you send you the data back. Makes it less time consuming for making a login flow. Now, I want to go to the second one, but before that, this made signing in really easy, because you're just clicking on one, providing your information, and then you're signing in automatically. But again, the problems that we talked about earlier, which is, which option should I select? Now, once I select, my email ID typing would be more or less like the one GIF at the bottom. I keep typing it, making a mistake. How do we avoid all these things happening again? So that's where a lot of, uh, I mean, a lot of apps have huge drop-offs, like about, <clears throat> Over 50% of people, they say, don't complete their sign-in flows. And when we talk to a lot of the top apps in the country, uh, they mention that they are not happy with the sign-in flows because it's, it's overly complicated. Now, uh, this is where Smart Lock comes into picture. Smart Lock is a product that allows you to kind of save the credential information and associate it to your identity. So if I'm using XYZ app, when I log in for the first time, or when I'm signing up for the first time, I can actually save the credentials on Smart Lock. This makes signing in again an automatic process. So when you open the app, or when you reinstall the app again, what it happens is it knows your identity, which is your email ID password. It will automatically put it up from the credentials and sign you in and go straight into the home page. You won't need to kind of go to the sign up page. And this works across platforms. So if you sign in on Android, save it on Smart Lock. When you go to web on your solution, it will automatically sign you in. You don't have to type your user ID password again. Now, if you are not, your solution does not require you to kind of, I, I mean, this can even be simplified, where the user doesn't even have to type in a user ID password at the start. You just have to select the account they're using, the password, uh, if you're using email ID, let's assume you're using user email ID and password. The password could be an auto-generated value. You can put it in because the user coming back to your site will automatically be logged in. User is never typing his password again after that. And that makes it very easy to kind of simplify and speed up the process of signing in for your user. So when the user comes back to your solution, he signed in once, saved onto credential store, 
you come back to the site again so site or the app again automatically signs us in so the next time somebody is all those points that we talked about for getting your password which option did you use all of that can be taken out and this works not just for google identity you can use a facebook you log in with facebook also it allows you to go through you give your id there it just goes through that now the amount of code that you got to write is something like this really really lit, very concise code you basically create a initial request you set the support type of logins that you support and uh, and then you request for it that's basically all it's there so the amount of typing that you got to do in terms of writing in code to realize this use case is really small when you use the sdk this is how it happens in chrome the first one was in android this one is in chrome now one more concern i talked about was that user has to type in their user id password right now that is a place where a lot of drop off happens because there are mistakes that are made when you type in because of the cramped keyboard and, or uh, you you are in a moving vehicle and things like that makes it more difficult to type in your user id password that's where this api called an auth hint api comes into picture what auth hint api allows you to do is basically it throws up a dialog like this showing all the identities that you've registered on the device so in a place where you have a user id that needs to be typed assume it's email instead of typing it when you click on that when the focus comes to that a dialog like this will come up prompting all the accounts that are already there You, your email anyway your phone already has your email id registered to it that email id will come up what you got to do is click it automatically populate that for you is a need for you to type in your password eliminated it works with phone numbers too so the phone numbers again you don't have to type in your phone numbers you just can go ahead and prompt the user the user can select it and it will automatically get loaded and this makes it and some of the uh, people that we worked with have conversions over 20% uh because they actually implemented to sign up uh the signing in became a lot faster uh the number of mistakes that user did typing in the wrong thing uh, wrong email id or wrong phone number got reduced so the whole login process became a lot more faster and simpler for people uh let me skip this one but let's see how much code is there it basically has this much code to actually work with when you want to add that to android you are asking for the hint api and this works independent of but they use use smart lock or uh, any other it can be added to any text field where you want to populate your user id and that makes it really really easy this is the amount of code that you need to go for android and now let's jump on to something which is so now we have done two parts actually three com three components first is how do you sign in google sign in allows you to do that second we actually looked at uh, smart lock which allows you to save the credential so first guys simplify the signing in process second simplify the re-signing process or re-logging in sort of a mechanism the third one allowed something uh, third one augmented the experience by reducing the amount of typing in in a user had to do so the amount of amount of keyboard usage got reduced because you're just clicking through selecting your id that you want to work with now five is auth basically is about the back end part now this is all front end right on your device now if you want to kind of talk about the back end there are a couple of things one is that a login system should be set up on a very secure server so there will be security around that fine that's can be done but it also needs to be high uptime you cannot tell your users that oh you can't login because my server did not all my services are available but you can't log in though bad idea so you need a high uptime server which is costly is not easy a uh, 99.95 server is not as uh, is is going to be difficult to maintain and administer changes everything is actually trickier in that uh, it also needs to handle user credentials you need to integrate it with things like how do you handle password resets so you need code to be done for all this if you're doing it all by yourselves how do you do authentication flows uh, basically if the user has roles and responsibility authorization uh, roles and responsibility then how do you map these things how can you change some of this it also has to manage user sessions how long will be the user session somebody sends you a mail i want you to revoke my password what would be the process for that you need to actually be having ui to do ui or or a programmatic constructs to do all these things basically because 
you can't get like one user asks you, you have 50,000 users. One user asks you, I want you to revoke my password. And you go into the admin goes into the SQL table and types in SQL. That's a bad idea. He misses one statement, everybody will get logged out. So those sort of mistakes you want to avoid. So you have to build in uh, more effort. I mean, you have to build all these things into your server-side uh, management tool. Mapping user restrictions. Again, roles and responsibilities, if you want to do, you have to actually create uh, best practices. You have to ensure that somebody cannot be an admin as well as a user. A user, when given admin, has to be like checked again. All these processes have to be built into the programs that you write on the server side. Now, what Firebase actually gives, Firebase uh, auth gives you is a mechanism to do all these things, keeping Firebase as the backend for this. The currently supported uh, sign-in methods are, uh, <coughs> we've added one more, by the way, phone. Uh, GitHub, G uh, GitHub, Gmail, Facebook, uh, Twitter, your anonymous, I mean, your, your user ID password, if you need that support, and also phone. These all are options that are available already. And you can use any of this to sign into the Firebase backend. The Firebase backend will tell you, hey, this person is allowed to sign in and use all the services. It not only does that, but it also allows, so if you're actually logging into one, using Firebase auth and you're using Firebase database, you don't have to re-log into other services in Firebase. You're only logging in once. The token provided has access across the board. So this makes it really easy for you to kind of speed up the usage of services in your app. Like if you're using storage, for instance, to store all the images, you are using real-time database, say, for messages and uh, <coughs> uh, communication between users. You are using uh, another Firebase service uh, like uh, analytics, for instance, or Multiple services are there. So basically, if you want to use, it's the same token that you would use. You are signing in once at the start. And that token can be used for all of these other systems. So instead of actually signing into each system and to authenticate and authorize, you can actually manage it one place for all these services. So it makes it really easy for you to ma manage, the, uh, manage and administer your users from a security perspective. This is all that you got to do in order to kind of create something with user ID and password, one line. It does all this work of verifying it, storing it, get coming back and authenticating, all that thing is done for you. Now, the, what I said, you can log in once and access multiple services, which makes otherwise in a, in a separate, if you're using separate services for this, you have to log into each service. And then that it can, it might be under the hood. The user might type in the user ID password once, but before you use the service, you go to that server, give the user this password and, or credential, and then ensure that he's able to sign into that and get his authorization there. Use that to apply uh, the operation that you're actually trying to do. Much longer process. Uh, otherwise, with Firebase, it's much easier in that sense. Now, if you want to build the UI, so now we have talked about how to move out the back end also. Now, building UI, if you look at the simplified, super simplified workflow, I'm coming in, user is signed in or not. If they're not signed in, if they're signed in, take them say to the service. If they have not signed in, go to a sign up page. Very simple. But as you go and implement more of the features that I talked about earlier, the UI becomes complicated like this. This is a sta actual flow of an app with all the flows of uh, logging in just depicted in picture. This is not how complex it is. It is three times more complicated than this because you have to do it thrice for different platforms. So when you come back, the amount of code that we roughly did some experiments and said, okay, the amount of code most people would write on each of these platforms would be this much. Now with Firebase Auth UI, which is basically our solution, this reduces down to this. The amount of lines of code you write reduces down from 3K to seven, just seven lines of code. And this saves a lot of time in development. So if you are actually building a new solution around it, or you are actually uh, thinking of upgrading your security things, try look at this one, because it saves you a ton of time, a ton of testing. You could use your resources who work on writing 5K lines of code on one platform to kind of move and work on something else, which is more important for your business, maybe the next business feature. And this is how the UI looks like when you use Firebase Auth, uh, Auth UI. 
It basically has customization of the UI. You can actually theme it to your application. It, it provides you sign-in flows. It provides you create account flows. All, all these things are provided. Uh, and you have this consistent experience across applications. So if two or three of the apps are using the same Firebase Auth UI with their own own branding on it. From a user's perspective, he will clearly understand what is the permission that he is giving, what is the information he is giving, what will be the next screen like. So there's a consistency across applications, and it becomes really easy for the user. So in a nutshell, this is how much code that is there. Super cool, really simple to write, and that actually gets you the UI up and running for for login. You don't have to worry about all the different flows that we talked about. You don't have to worry about how you wire it to the back end. All you got to do is use, the, use this plus the Firebase uh, server, I mean auth component. Auth UI and auth component put together makes it ready in less than an hour for you, which otherwise would be like at least a cup, at least a week and a half, including testing. So this allows you to kind of build stuff really, really fast. So that's all I had to kind of talk about today, but just to run through it one more time. We talked about Firebase. Uh, we talked about Google Sign In, which makes it si signing into the into your solution really easy. You don't have to really maintain user ID passwords and stuff like that. Okay. From there, we move to Smart Lock. Smart Lock saves the credentials you used so that you can reuse it to automatically log in your user. So the re-login becomes a completely frictionless process. Now, then we talked about Hint API. Hint API basically allowed the sign up process to become a lot easier because you're not typing in your credentials. You're not typing in the user IDs or, uh, or email IDs or your uh, phone numbers, for instance. It automates that for you. The user gets a selection box of the, common, uh, the IDs that are registered on the device. You could select the one, and it auto-populates it on your behalf. From there, we move to Firebase Auth, which is the back-end server. So once your front-end is these three things put together in the front-end makes Sign up process easy, saving your passwords, signing in easy, and saving your passwords really easy. Saving and re-logging in really easy. But there also is a backend component. So if you want to do the backend component, you could use Firebase Auth to do it. Now, once that is done, if you really want to kind of completely take your hands off the UI also, you don't want to build the UI for logging in, you can use Firebase Auth UI and kind of simplify the whole thing. So with this, all these products put together, your auth experience for the user becomes really easy, consistent. From your perspective, the amount of effort that you need to do is a lot less. That's it from me. Thank you.